Okay, we are in Luke chapter <clears throat> six, still, um, the tree and its fruit. Okay, honestly, this is one of my favorite passages. I'm probably going to say that a lot. But it really is one of my favorites. And guys, this is a, a very important one for you to take to heart. It says, <clears throat> verse 43, a good tree can't produce bad fruit. And a bad tree can't produce good fruit. <clears throat> a tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes and grapes are not picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. Sometimes we run into people and we think they're, you know, good people. They're healthy people. They go to church. They look like maybe they're doing the right things. But at some point, you know, sooner or later you start to go, what's going on? Why are they, why are they treating me this way? Or why are they being like this when they claim to be? you know, a good person or a believer, and yet all you ever see from them, right? All you ever, what you hear out of their mouths is what reveals if they really are a good person or not, right? So this is where we go, okay, look, we have to examine ourselves, right? Because that's what Jesus was just talking about was that we are not judges, though, there are places where we are called to um, identify people, right? Like I'm not condemning someone. If I judge them, I'm in a position of condemning them, right? So when we're looking at someone and we're going, hey, what they're saying and doing doesn't match who they claim they are. It's not us being judgmental. It's us being discerning. Do you understand the difference? So we can say, hey, that behavior is not, representative of a heart that's devoted to the Lord, right? <clears throat> and that's not being judgmental. Again, it's being discerning and we're even called to lovingly confront people, right? So that also is not necessarily being judgmental if it's a true black and white issue in scripture and not a, not a gray area where we can have a difference of opinion. So here's the thing, you know, we, we want to be identified as those good trees. We're going to know based on the fruit that people produce. And one of the best books I've ever read on this subject is Francis Chan's book, Crazy Love. Um, you know, he was our pastor for a very, very long time. And um, he talks a lot about that, that you know, we can't just say we're Christians. There's going to be a passion for the Lord if we're really truly saved. And we do know people by their fruit. And it's the things that we say overflow from our heart. So if we're starting to say things that are not in line with our faith, then, there, then there's a problem. And here's the thing, Quinn Oakley Oliver. Sometimes, even if we love the Lord, we may be starting to be influenced by something, something we're watching online, you know, a TikToker or a friend at school, someone on our team. Sometimes we can choose to be around or avoid people. Sometimes we can't, but we have to be on our guard. What are we fertilizing the soil of our heart with? Because what nutrients you put in are also what's going to be returned, right? Yeah. What you plant is what will come out. You cannot plant a fig tree and get grapefruit, right? So we can't plant stuff in our hearts and mind and expect that's not going to have a return. You know what I'm saying? 
So that's why it's important that we're paying attention to who are we surrounding ourselves with? What are we watching? What are we listening to? Um, what's our community like? You know, that's going to reveal a lot and time will tell. Um, sometimes people can seem all well and good for quite a long time and then overnight they demonstrate who they really are, that they're not a fig tree after all. And, um, and that can be disillusioning sometimes, but again, we don't become their judge. We are discerning and sometimes disappointed, but they will answer to the Lord for what comes out of their mouth and their behavior. Right. So, okay. Over to first Kings. Hey, Quinn. He's okay. He's just tired. You're good. You're good. Your hair looks good too, actually. Okay. <clears throat> We're back in Elijah. Uh, first Kings 19. What did Elijah just do? Do you guys remember? Something crazy just happened. Oh, it's the rain. Storms. No. It's seven times. Good job, Oakley. Yes. Sure. And also that, Oliver. So <clears throat> he calls down fire from heaven. The altar is consumed. He says to Ahab, get yourself ready because he and his servant went up on Mount Carmel to pray. The rainstorm's coming. The rainstorm um, is about to come. And so Ahab goes with his chariot back and then Elijah is given supernatural speed and he runs ahead of the chariot. And Oakley, I think it was you that pointed out yesterday, very insightfully, I might add, um, that it was like the king's chariot, like the king's horses, like this was, oh, it was Oliver. So quality chariot and horses, and yet Elijah outran. And so that was pretty remarkable. So here we are now. Okay. <clears throat> um, when Ahab got home, this is chapter 19 of first Kings. He told Jezebel, which is his wife. And by the way, she is not a good person talking about trees that bear certain fruit check this out he told jezebel everything elijah had done including the way he had killed all the prophets of baal which jezebel's obviously these are her people right she's a baal worshiper so she's not going to be happy so jezebel sent this message to elijah may the gods strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow i have not killed you just as you killed them so talk about a strong woman right like she is not playing around she's like hey elijah be be warned i'm about to take you out elijah was afraid and fled for his life he went to beersheba a town in judah and he left his servant there okay so what how was elijah feeling when jezebel threatened him he was scared. He was afraid. In fact, he fled and he, he abandoned his servant. He was so much in turmoil, which by the way, that wasn't a good idea because his servant, his companion, that fellowship would have been important in a time of need and fear, right? Like isolation, our enemy wants to isolate us when we're afraid and when we're emotionally distraught. The enemy will always want to isolate us so that we stew in that and we don't have somebody to sharpen us. And it's tempting to pull away when we're feeling sad or discouraged, Quinn. Mm -hmm. But instead, we should seek fellowship with others. Now, here's here's the thing. You guys, get a hold of this. Elijah had just done incredibly courageous things, right? Stood up to hundreds of prophets the king did these mir miracles just ran ahead of the chariot and then jezebel comes and threatens his life which he'd already been in danger of losing his life many times <clears throat> speaking to the king but jezebel he knows mean is really a threat but he becomes afraid and so just remember, we're human beings. We're going to have our seasons where we're confident. And then we'll have seasons where we're like, we've forgotten who we are. And we've forgotten who God is. And we go into emotional turmoil. And so um, 
we'll pick this story up tomorrow, but just know even the strong at some seasons of our lives begin to feel weak. And that's why we have to be perpetually relying on the Lord for our help and our strength so that we don't do all this amazing work for God. And then all of a sudden we're weak, right? We want to, we want to be perpetually finishing well every season of our lives, right? So, okay, let's pray.